Hey everybody, I'm Shane Ireland. I have a guest with me today, Robert Caldwell, Caldwell Cigars, Lost and Found Cigars. What's up, man? What's up? Nice Good to, to see, see you man. again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I wanted to chat just a little bit because you and I have had a lot of conversations like this over the past couple years. Basically, the crossover between pipe smoking and cigar smoking. Like, I'm primarily a pipe smoker and have been exploring cigars a ton uh, in the last many years, really, and you had a, the opposite experience recently. Mm -hmm. So remind me when you got started with pipes. Was it really, like, right about the time that we had met? Uh, no, well, like, 10 years before, I, I bought a couple pipes. Ah. And then, like, I don't know why, but I thought, well, I said, I'm gonna try smoking pipes, and then I had this romance that, like, when I get older, more wise, a little bit more gray hair, and look, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. yeah, better look all life. distinguished, yeah, yeah. gonna do that. And actually, even my wife, um, when she found out I had them, because I got them before her, mm -hmm. I was like, ah, I don't really, and she's like, well, when you get older, you know? So it was like kind of one of those things, and then, I like, I, I would smoke them, like, like just I didn't know didn't know how to do it, and mm -hmm. I consistently kept like burning my palate, and it was just really awful experience. And I feel like cigars. I mean, as long as you know how to light a cigar, you can smoke it, which you can is keep the it, same you thing. Can keep it lit, pipe. yeah. But I uh, I had like a very bad experience, I guess, in the beginning, mm -hmm. and so that didn't really work out for me. And then so when you and I first started talking, I loved the idea of enjoying tobacco this way, but I didn't know how to do that. Right. So over the last year or something, I've gotten much better. Well, I was going to say, I think for me, what I remember being, I guess maybe like a breakthrough moment for you, was we were both at the Mule Town Pipe Show in uh, Columbia, Tennessee at the Briarworks factory. That was 22, March of 22, I think. Um, you were there because you had done an event at, yep. at their shop and kind of just stayed and hung back for the for the show. And we spent a lot of time that weekend, you, me, Jeremy, Pete Prevost, Jeremy Reeves, that is, smoking and talking about stuff and trying different things. And I feel like that's when, after that, you started hitting me up a lot more, asking for recommendations on stuff, started buying more pipes, and has been, you, you kind of took off since then. So as a cigar smoker coming to pipes, I guess, first and foremost, what would you say were maybe the most challenging parts there? Like maybe technique wise, maybe like knowing where to start? Yeah, well, so one, tobacco. Mm -hmm. So understanding, and you guys have been incredibly helpful with guiding me, understanding my palate and what I like with cigars mm -hmm. because the experience is far different between a pipe and a cigar. However, I like what I like. And I think right. that what I like is consistent like across the spectrum of different things of enjoyment. Right. Um, so understanding my palate and what pipe tobaccos to guide me to, I think was very relevant, but I wouldn't have enjoyed those tobaccos if I didn't know how to pack the bowl. Yeah, yeah. Light the pipe, use the tamp, and all these types of things that go with it. And then I do find myself as well, like when I'm lazy, mm -hmm. kind of regressing back to like bad behavior, I guess. So mm -hmm. and I burned, like last night, you know, I was smoking a little, smoking fast, jet lagged. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I started burning my palate because I wasn't doing it the way that I know how to do it. But it's been really, really helpful for me. And by the way, I get all of my stuff only from you guys. <laughs> Thank true you. story. Thank so, you. Um, but you know, I found that I like smaller bowls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, you know, I got a bunch of pipes and I had a lot of larger bowls, which I didn't like. Um, I got a lot of, I'd say the wrong tobaccos mm -hmm. uh, or wrong tobaccos for my palate. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I, I came to understand what I like with the pipes and then dually with the cigars, there's a lot of overlap there. So and I didn't know you could age pipe tobacco. Yeah, yeah. When I found that out and I started tasting some of the aged tobaccos, it became really brilliant. And for me as a cigar smoker, there's a couple like great utilities for me with a pipe, one of which is, you know, you could take a few puffs and enjoy it, or you could smoke a 15, 20 minute bowl mm -hmm. and have a very well-rounded like tobacco experience. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. a cigar, I would never light a cigar and smoke for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. that, it's just a waste of a cigar to me. But a pipe you can enjoy in that way, which I don't feel like you can with a cigar. Yeah. That's part of it. And then secondly, there's sometimes when like I'd like a tobacco experience, but I don't feel like a cigar. Yeah. And the more that, and that's something that's new. So in the beginning it was like, okay, I got 15, 20 minutes. So I want, you know, a little tobacco or whatever and fun, light up a pipe for a little while. But then once I started smoking a pipe a little bit more regularly, now sometimes I want to have a pipe instead of having a cigar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'll always be a cigar smoker first. I mean, I love my cigars. Of course. I just went about three weeks without having a pipe. Right. But I smoked cigars over that three week period. And then I came here yesterday, I smoked a pipe. I didn't smoke a cigar when I got in last night. And then so now for me, there's times at which like I want a pipe. Mm. And then the other thing that's helpful for me is like my wife 
you know, like wives are wives. So, I mean, you smoke a cigar. First of all, it takes, you know, I smoke a Robusto in two hours and 25 <laughs> right, minutes. So it's right. a time commitment that she doesn't like. <laughs> you know, I get a bit more smelly. Yeah, sure. So, you it's know, a little, there's a lot of times stronger. Yeah, if I have a little more facial hair, I'll go to bed, I get in bed, and she's like, can you go wash your beard again? <laughs> right, that type of thing. Right, so right. she very much likes the pipe because she loves the way it smells. The aroma. Which I think mm -hmm. 99% of people do. Yep. And then it's not a, a heavy time commitment. And then, I mean, you smoke a pipe, you brush your teeth, your palate's pretty good. Pretty fresh, yeah. You smoke a cigar, you brush your teeth, you're going to brush your teeth again and again and again to kind of get it out. So... Not a knock on cigars, but I think the, the utility of a pipe is that that it's an added utility. Yeah. yeah. And so for me, I mean, it's interesting because I always saw them as something that were unobtainable for the experience just because I didn't know how to use them. Mm. And then, or I felt like it was pipe or cigar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then now it's like cigar, but then occasionally I do enjoy my pipes. Or I'll go through times like I had, I think in May, I had like three weeks where I didn't smoke any cigars. I just smoked pipes. And the other thing that I like with a pipe a lot is I do take time off from smoking cigars because yeah. I like to let my palate rest. Of course. And if I, if I were to spend three weeks taking time off of a cigar to let my palate rest, if I smoked an occasional pipe in that period of time, it doesn't really bother It doesn't have me. that impact, no yeah. But if I smoked a cigar during that period of time, it probably would affect it where yeah. I wouldn't get back to like the virgin palate that I'm looking to get to when I'm blending cigars. Interesting. Now you made a, you made a point a moment ago. So what I was trying to get at too is that I have been for a while a firm believer that if you enjoy premium tobacco in general, that these do two, these do occupy two different spaces in your rotation or in your in your enjoyment of premium tobacco. And I also believe that being honest, I had the opposite experience. So pipes were something that I was enamored with and, and, and romanticized mostly because aesthetically I love the design element. I love the idea that it's this tool that's an heirloom item that doesn't just get like burned up and gone, you know? And when I was a young guy getting into pipe smoking, it also seemed more economical to buy a tin of pipe tobacco that could be like 20 bowls versus a cigar that is 10, 15, 16 bucks, especially if you lived in California at the time, just gone in a moment. So it wasn't until way, way later that cigars became something that I was smoking more regularly and it wasn't just like a special occasion kind of a thing but I do believe firmly that learning more about cigars and smoking more cigars made me a better pipe smoker and vice versa I think that the more experience you have with tobacco in general and with tasting different types of tobacco different curing methods different regions uh, you do tend to enjoy whichever of those things was your primary focus more um, like it's just more experience right mm. and I don't know if you found that too I don't know if you found that like smoking the H pipe tobaccos or just getting wrapping your head around pipe tobacco in general informed a little bit more of like how you're tasting other premium tobaccos because that was my experience 100% and then in addition to that I think that when I was first experimenting with tobaccos years ago like I thought all pipe tobaccos were like flavored Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'd smoked, you know, I'd smoked, uh, I think the first tobaccos I smoked were like the Davidoff, like, roll. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I would just, like, jam the thing in there and Flake I couldn't, couldn't get it lit. Yeah. And then the other thing, I got, like, cherry or vanilla, like, tins of tobacco, and I just kept burning my palate. I don't smoke flavored cigars. Right. So I thought it was, like, really kind of gross. But so much of what I knew about the pipe world was, like, flavored stuff. And then yeah. so for me as a cigar smoker, it was, like, very unenjoyable to try to do that. And then, you know, getting to know you and Jeremy and understanding the process and like the romance that goes behind it and then the different countries of origin and then different processes and flake and all this you yeah, know, yeah. stuff, the processes that you guys do with the tobaccos to provide different flavor experiences, that made it from like this thing that you jammed on and lighted on fire to like a much more sophisticated thing, which is what I always thought about cigars sure and you've been around me with other cigar makers that, yeah, yeah. Are, that are always curious you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. like you got a guy coming in tomorrow and it's like well, well almost I, every cigar maker that i've met at this point at some point try to pipe 10 years ago 20 years ago 40 years ago if they've been in the game that long and almost all of them are like eh, yeah it, it was too difficult yeah like the learning curve is steep and we say that all the time like i was determined when i decided that i was going to smoke a pipe to like get it right and it took forever for me personally like at that time there was less resources to guide you and i wasn't in a place that i had a lot of guidance from like people that were around me like if you have a local tobacconist pipe smokers around there it's gonna it's gonna speed up your enjoyment kind of like when you were at with at, with us at the mule town show one week end of hanging out with guys that really know what they're talking about is going to really, really help you on that learning curve. Yeah. And uh, I did it kind of alone for the first like many years. And I will never forget when I went from like 
maybe 10, 20% of the bulls I smoked were successful to like 80, 90% of the bulls I smoked were successful. Every now and then you miss pack or it's not the right moisture or something goes wrong. That's that's just, it happens. Um, but I remember when it switched for me, when I started, when I stopped struggling with it and started enjoying nearly every bowl that I had more consistently, then you have the exploration of all the different types of blends and everything else. Um, but it takes uh, it takes some determination. And I think that's one of the differences between cigars and pipes as a, as a medium. Um, but like I said, I think a well-rounded and fulfilling rotation includes both, for sure, in, in my in my opinion. Um, and I think you do get better at both of them when you have uh, when you have experience with yep. both of them as well. So you mentioned earlier that you that you came to the realization that you enjoyed small pipes. I think that's interesting because I also prefer small pipes. Like some of it is the weight because if if you're a clencher, I really like to have something that's easy to clench, especially if you're working. But I know that we also share another thing in common, which is that we prefer small ring gauge cigars. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if there's a correlation there. I mean, it seems to be, I hear that from a lot of guys, guys that are into small pipes and small cigars, both, yeah. um, and vice versa, you know what I mean? Either you want like that really, really, really long smoke, uh, you know, certain types of flavors, or you want something that is maybe a little more concentrated, maybe a little quicker. Um, what what has been your experience that led you to small pipes, would you say? And is there a relation between your cigar preferences? So I bought, well, actually, I, I would correlate it the same to me as when I was a cigar consumer, mm -hmm. that I just smoked everything. And then I smoked, the first 660 I smoked, it was a Zeno Barrel. Mm. Nice cigar. My brother-in-law gave it to me. Pretty strong cigar, and, too. Yeah, and I didn't enjoy it because, like, I didn't know why. And then I lit another one, and I didn't enjoy that, and then I realized that it was just too big. Mm -hmm. And then from then on, I never like really smoked. I mean, I'll try them when we're blending a cigar, but I dislike large cigars. And so with the pipes, I bought a bunch of different pipes. Um, and then I noticed, first of all, I had a little bit of an easier time with the smaller mm -hmm. pipes. Like I, it was, they were more manageable for me to light them, keep them lit, pack them, this type of stuff. And then, you know, same thing with the small cigar. I'd rather smoke like three Coronas than a Churchill. Or right, or, right. I mean, that's yeah. not a fair trade off, but a Toro versus two Coronas. I'd rather smoke two Coronas because I, I get kind of ADD with a flavor. And so the same thing with a pipe, you know, a large pipe to me is like a big commitment that I'd rather just smoke a cigar. Yeah. Um, if I'm going to smoke something for that long. Or more than one pipe. Yeah, or yeah, more than yeah. one pipe. But the smaller pipes for me, you know, I don't know. I just, I, they, I just gravitated to them almost immediately. But I think it was my last time here at yeah, last trip that I was here, I really identified that. Yeah, yeah. And or maybe it was at IPCPR, I identified that because um, you guys had had a small pipe there that my business partner picked up, and then he was smoking it. And then I went to try it. It was at one of these Peterson, but with a short, juniors, shorter yeah. stem. And I was like, what a cool pipe! And then so I went back and I actually gave away all my larger bowls because mm -hmm. they weren't nice pipes anyways. It was mm -hmm. just I bought a bunch of different things to try to figure it out. And then now I'm just focused on these smaller pipes. And then, um, I'm not sure if you asked me, I think you did, but in terms of flavor, uh, you know, I'm talking with you to understand what to look for and what I would like was very helpful. And then I think the first thing that I said to you was like, I like that ketchupy taste. Yeah, sure. Like, or the, the tangy, yeah, the tangy yeah. smell of like apple cider vinegar, ketchup thing. I just, I gravitate to that thing right away. Yeah. Like, that's what I like. Yeah. Yeah. What like if like if it has that, then I'm gonna be happy when I smoke it. And you have been you have been gravitating mostly towards Virginia's Virginia breaks yep. and stuff, yeah. Um actually I just remembered I have something for you. We can nice. we can leave that in there if we want, but uh I like gifts. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean that's that's the thing. Like I I Premium cigars and pipes and pipe tobacco, two sides of the same coin. And and like I said, I, I think that uh, maybe now more than um, the past several decades, I feel like for the past several decades, like maybe from the 70s on, it's been like an either or thing. Like there's been like, a, are you a cigar guy or are you a pipe guy? And like maybe you occasionally dabble in one or the other, in, in both, but uh, there's been this like kind of weird division between the two groups. And you I know feel why? Like, you pipe guys are fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, yes. But what I was gonna say is, I feel like more recently, I've, I've encountered a lot more people on both sides of the business that appreciate and enjoy both. And it seems like that probably hasn't been a thing since way before all of our time, 
you know what I mean, when tobacco use was maybe more widespread in general. Um, but it seems like there is a bigger group that is interested in both things, and I think that's really cool. I think it's interesting. Um, and like I said, I think it's good for, for both sides of the both sides of the hobby. Yeah, and I think, so back to the, the difference, I mean, you can stumble your way into becoming a cigar smoker. I think it's real hard to stumble your way into becoming a smoke, pipe smoker unless somebody holds your hand and shows you how to do it. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, anybody can light a cigar. You can light it wrong. You can cut it wrong. But you can figure out what you're doing wrong. You know, you and, and it'll it, still smoke. And it'll still smoke. Yeah. So if you cut it too much and you light it the wrong way, it'll still smoke. Mm-hmm. Pipe snow. Like mm-hmm. you pack that shit in there too tight, you're not going to be able to draw it. Or you, you suck it too fast or it's too loose, you burn your palate. Or you you know spit into the thing on accident, you burn your palate. And it, it, you get... With a cigar... I mean, if you're a novice cigar smoker and you suck down a few big cigars, you might get a little bit queasy feeling or the next day like... Right, you know, right, right. But a pipe, you could smoke five, six puffs of a pipe this big and you put in tobacco that's really wet and it's packed too tight and you're sucking it really hard and it gets really hot and you might not notice, but all of a sudden you blow out your palate. Mm-hmm. And so the punishment is hard and swift with a pipe, whereas a cigar is much more lenient. And, you know, there are, like we were talking in uh, in Germany with another cigar maker mm-hmm. that loves pipes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, but his his first thing was like, like I wish I knew more about them to understand it and so I think it's just I mean for for somebody that's interested you have to have patience which I didn't have and then you have to give it the time that it needs yeah which for a cigar smoker is real easy like if you're smoking a little too fast you just slow it down right right. but with a pipe it's the same thing but it's also a very different thing so the experience is if you're smoking it too fast you don't really know necessarily you're smoking it's too, too fast, late. so it's too late. Yeah, yeah. And a cigar will tell you right away. I mean, it'll start the canoe or you'll get that, you know, like just big cinder on the end of it. Or, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you can just set it down in the ashtray, wait two minutes, knock off the ash and keep going. Yeah. But this, I mean, you're going to hurt yourself. You know? So, <laughs> And that was my experience in the beginning. I, I, it was very unfortunate because I got some cool pipes many years ago. and uh, But yeah, I was sitting down with you guys at Mule Town and really starting to, to understand it. And I still, like, I still all the time, you know, screw up. Yeah, like, sure. You know, yesterday I was, like, forcing, I guess, a bit. And then today I've been doing just fine. Yeah. So. I mean, I've been doing this a really long time. And you know, like I said, I, I would say that there's still somewhere between a 2 and 5% failure rate for me. And it's all user error. Always user error. Um, and it just happens. You just, you just suck it up, drive on, dump it out, reload another pipe. So last question on this. I'm curious uh, because, again, we're coming from this, uh, the total opposite sides. Um, as somebody who is primarily a cigar smoker and who has taken to the pipe or become interested in it, started going down that rabbit hole, like what advice would you give, if any, uh, to guys that are really, really familiar with premium cigars and might be curious about pipes? Probably to do your research and try to find what it is that you like. Hmm. Um, what does that mean? So like, if you smoke a cigar, what type of cigar do you like? Size, hmm. which I think you obviously correlate to the... Um, to the pipe, but like also when I drink coffee, I drink espresso. I'm not like a, you know, tall American coffee guy. I'm like yeah. a short shot of espresso. Yep, yep. Same way that I am with a cigar, same way that I am with a pipe. Right. So I like I like those kind of like smaller experiences that, you know, they work for me. And then also just trying to understand the tobaccos. And mm. the thing is, it's real easy to make a mistake on a tin of tobacco. If you make a mistake on a box of cigars, you're kind of screwed. I mean, you're three hundred dollars versus fifteen dollars. So sure. as you know, I mean, I bought probably well over 100 tins of tobaccos from you guys and probably 10, 15 mm-hmm, pipes. Mm-hmm. And then just, you know, it doesn't, it, you don't like it, pass it on. You know? mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. I sent over, you know, a lot of the, my tobaccos that I that weren't for me, I sent them to my uncle. Pipes, I gave them away to different friends that wanted to try them. But I think not being afraid to just go through the same path that you went through to understanding what you like was Just cigars. experimentation. Yeah. But- and the old pipe tobaccos. It's just really good. Yeah, if you have a chance, if you have to smoke chance. some well-aged stuff, it's definitely uh, definitely a game changer. But uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I I would I would say that that's that's the the sort of purpose of of your tobacconists out there, whether they're online tobacconists like Smoking Pipes, whether it's your local tobacconist. Uh, hopefully, you can find somebody that has experience with both that can give you some direction. Uh, you know, I smoke this kind of cigar. This is my profile. This is the kind of stuff that I love. Like, what would it translate to in a pipe tobacco? Um, 
and uh, yeah, you might be you might be pleasantly surprised. And like I said, I've had phases where I'm smoking two, three cigars a day and like maybe one pipe, and totally the opposite. Um, and it kind of just uh, that's that's the fun of it, I think too. Yeah. It's also sort of a it prevents me from ever being in a rut in one side of, of this or the other. Uh, and it's also just a nice change of pace every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I think it makes you a better pipe smoker uh, if you're experienced in cigars, and I think the opposite is also true. But find out for yourself, I guess. Thanks, everybody.